Hi everyone, and welcome to Studio Jake. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. I'm an author, I'm a vlogger, and I'm a blogger. <laughs> and I do all kinds of stuff, like talk about movies, comic books, anime. In fact, I'm going to be at Anime California um, this weekend. In fact, this video is being filmed, pre-filmed, uh, right before um, I take off to go to that. So I'm, I'll have updates for you about that on my blog. So you'll want to head over there to... Uh, hear all the information that happened there. And also I'm going to be talking about Spider-Man. I'm going to be talking about a little dust up I had with Redbox and a whole lot more. So sit back, relax, and welcome to Studio Jake. <laughs> So to start off, I want to remind you to like this video, um, be sure to subscribe to Studio Jake, also ring that little bell because YouTube is doing this weird curating thing where you don't see your subscriptions in chronological order anymore. They choose based uh, from your subscription to the videos they think you'll like the best. I actually don't enjoy that, but especially because content creators like me it affects us kind of uh, negatively, but you know, it is what it is. So ring that little bell, that way you get notifications. So before um, we jump into Sony being greedy, I want to talk to you about a little dust up I had with the thing called Redbox. Now, um, I apologize in advance. I, uh, I, all I have is phone. I don't have fancy techniques where I can throw it up on the screen yet. Um, that's just because of the nature of this of this vlog, but anyway, um, so as you know, the announcement that uh, Sony backed away from negotiations with Disney about an upcoming sequel to Spider-Man Far From Home. So um, I was res I was responding to a another guy who writes for a website called MCU Cosmic. I think he actually might be in charge of it. I don't know for sure, but his name is Jeremy Con Conrad. And so he wrote, MCU Cosmic will not be covering future Spider-Man movies that are not part of the MCU. And so I retweeted him and I said, I don't blame you. My love for Spider-Man will keep me interested, even if it is from Redbox. So Redbox sees this and they respond, did you really need to add the even if part? I got a response from, from the actual verified Redbox account. So I said, I actually do want to take that back. Redbox is the only way to watch a movie and get an affordable IC. Hashtag Redbox rules. And so Redbox then responds, that's more like it. So you can see the tweets there. Um, as, as you can see, the, again, from the verified uh, Redbox account. So then I retweeted that and I wrote, I love Redbox even more. And I got a, uh, and they, they gave me a like for that one. But it's true, I do like Redbox even more now when, whenever they respond to their fans like that. Because I am a fan of Redbox. I love renting movies from them. That is not up for dispute there. But I just thought that was kind of, of a funny aside that I wanted to share with everyone. That they actually directly responded to, uh, to me whenever I mentioned them. But I love Redbox even now. Go off this weekend and during the week and get a red box film. All right, so we're going to get to the meat of this episode, which is we're going to be talking about Spider-Man. Now, here's what here is my understanding of the for those of you who don't know, um, which if I don't know how you could know, it was trending and I actually I believe it was Wednesday and I actually was talking about it so <laughs> much on Wednesday that one of my tweets, because I'm verified on Twitter now, one of my tweets was actually added to the Twitter moment when, because, you know, Twitter does these things called moments where they do, uh, where they do like news things. Sometimes they're really dumb things. Like, you know, everyone knows I work for the real daily wire. My boss is Ben Shapiro. And, uh, they took a thing he said from his podcast and made it a Twitter moment, which was really stupid. And cause it was, they took, a three second thing he said out of context, which is what this is what the left likes to do, right? 
and they made it a Twitter moment, and so like people were responding. But if you listen to what Ben actually said on his podcast, it wasn't what that out of uh, joint thing was. But anyway, so they made a Twitter moment when they, it was announced that Sony had walked away from Disney, from the negotiating with Disney, and uh, they're going to pursue Spider-Man on their own. I didn't like this. I thought this is a terrible idea. Uh, Sony hasn't made a good Spider-Man film, live-action Spider-Man film, since Spider-Man 2. I mean, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 are good, but they're not what Homecoming or Far From Home are. They're just not. I like both of those movies. I know that now, it's as a conservative, you're supposed to have Disney derangement syndrome, and you're supposed to hate Disney because, you know... SJWs and stuff, and which it's true, Disney has allowed itself to become infected by SJWs. But I, but I want to judge a thing based on the thing. So you know, and if you read my reviews, I call out when they put in stuff, and that's SJW and politically correct and all this. I I call that out, and I wanted to uh, uh, give you a little bit of background. So what happened was Sony and Disney were already kind of having problems. Uh, sharing because Marvel Studios is owned by Disney, but before Marvel Studios was bought out by Disney, they had sold licensing to several other studios. So uh, one of which was Paramount, but Disney and uh, of course 20th Century Fox owned X Men and the Fantastic Four. Um, the license to it, I should say, to these intellectual properties or IPs. We're going to get technical. And um, so how Disney saw this was. They kind of just paid off. So like Paramount, they just kind of paid off. Uh, and again, Paramount was more just uh, uh, pushing the films out. They didn't really have a whole lot of involvement with the shooting of them. But, uh, you know, still a Universal owned Hulk. But uh, somehow Disney worked around that where they can have the Hulk character, but they don't. They can't make a Hulk movie. Universal still has the that license, but they haven't done like their own um, in, in years, obviously. Not since The Incredible Hulk. And um, as well as Fox owned X-Men and Fantastic Four. And of course Disney uh, bought them out. Fox was already in trouble. So a lot of people were like, oh, Disney just kind of swooped in and you know bought all their stocks. That's not true. Fox was already kind of having problems. They had made a couple of stinker movies. And uh, so uh, Disney bought them out. Now as for Sony, they only had the IP. The, uh, the rights to Spider-Man and all his sub-characters. So that's how you got the Venom movie was made without Marvel's direction. That's how um, Spider-Verse was made without uh, Marvel's direction. So basically what happened was after the, the failure that was The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Sony agreed to loan um, the, uh, the property of Spider-Man um, to Disney, and now Sony is still technically making these films, but uh, Kevin Feige is there, and he can appear in other Marvel movies. That's why you see him in Captain America Civil War. That's why you see him in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, aside from Homecoming and Far From Home. Now, um, basically what happened was... Sony and Disney were already kind of having... Because they're independent studios. Like, one is not owned by the other. So it's not like, you know... Um, it's not like they were... Uh, you know, having this uh, spat between like Disney and Pixar, you know, because Pixar at one time was independent and then Disney bought it out. It was more like it's two totally different companies um, that are negotiating this. And the negotiations were already breaking down at one point. Everyone, Everyone's acting like this thing just kind of happened. But really, you can tell because Sony told Disney if Spider-Man Far From Home does not Cross the one billion dollar mark, we're going to take him back. And Disney said, challenge accepted. So, but what Sony didn't calculate on was Marvel was riding high on Avengers Endgame, which is a really fantastic film. And so, and also Lion King, Aladdin, which was kind of a moderate success. Aladdin was a moderate success, Lion King. Uh, audience loved it. Critics hated it, of course, because uh, critics hate anything that's fun, even on even on the conservative side. So it crossed the billion dollar mark. So Disney is feeling kind of haughty after this. And now again, I'm going to be bashing Sony a lot in this video. Please don't take my my thoughts on how Sony was crappy during this whole thing. 
um, as to say that I don't think Disney is a crappy company. Since since they ousted uh, Roy Jr., Disney has really fallen apart. Mike Eisner and Bob Iger have really created a culture of just being a greasy um, used car salesman when it comes to Disney and their properties. So I'm not defending Disney overall, but in this case, yes, Sony was in the wrong. But anyway, Disney's feeling kind of haughty, so they come to Sony and say, hey, we did it. We crossed the billion dollar mark. We want more of Spider-Man because the, their deal is if, for Spider-Man to be in the MCU, Sony gets to keep most, I think it's something like 90% of the box office and then Disney makes all the money off the merchandise. So, um, so Sony says no, because guess what? Sony is riding high off of Spider-Verse. And off of Venom. Now, I liked Venom. I thought it was good in the sense that it's like a Fast and Furious film. It's very adrenaline and it's action-packed and not a whole lot there as far as character development and whatnot. But it's, uh, but it's a fine film. And I know my fellow conservative movie critic, Christian Toto, he actually put it, he did a, he did a beginning or, or mid-year worst films and he put Venom on that list. He hated it and that's fine. Um, Christian Toto is one of the best conservative movie reviewers, so I respect his opinion. I disagree with him there. I thought Venom was just a fun movie. And they're all, Sony is also riding high off of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is an amazing film. I wouldn't even say it's a great film. It has brand new kind of animation techniques. They made it look like a comic. They were able to bring in like a swath of characters from uh, Marvel's uh, many multiverses, and it was, and it was great. So Sony's feeling kind of haughty. So when Disney comes in and says, we want 50%, Sony says no. My right hand is Sony, left hand is Disney. <laughs> so it went something like, like this, where Disney was like, no, right hand's Disney, left hand's Sony. Um, wait, the, okay, never mind. They do this thing where um, they're starting to go back and forth at each other. And um, they say, finally say, um, uh, the negotiations start to break down, and they had actually talked Disney down to 45%, and Disney would p kick up more money to finance Spider-Man. That was that was the last deal. Everyone thinks that Disney just came in and demanded 50%, and if you don't take that deal sooner, we're going to walk away. No, Disney was negotiating. They had they had uh, whittled down to 45% and offered to kick up more money to help pay for it. So it's not like Sony's paying for the whole thing. Disney would would also pick up the cash. So Sony walks away and because they already have the IP, the, the rights to the IP, and they walk away. And this is a big mistake by Sony. I mean a huge, 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 huge mistake. And I think it's kind of crappy of them to say, okay, Disney, we had this deal where if we reach the billion dollar mark, we would uh, give you um, we would let you do a third Spider-Man film, but uh, you want more money, so we're taking it away. Now, Disney was perfectly in their rights to ask for more money. Um, Spider-Man is one of the most anticipated things, or I should say Spider-Man 3 is the most anticipated thing in Phase 5. Phase 4 is hot garbage. I have talked. It's, you know, Doctor Strange, Black Widow, those two movies, and I guess Shang-Chi, I'm, um, I'm excited about, uh, I'm more excited about Black Widow, but nothing really looks good in phase four phase five is where all the good stuff is if that leaked announcement is is accurate so i don't think that um i should say i think that this that sony is overestimating their successes so like i said venom was a success because it was fun and it had no competition at the box office it came out when i think the same week as the star is born and actually for a while i don't know if it's still true but when venom first came out its audience rating was actually higher than a star is born now like i said i don't know if that's still true because rotten tomatoes cheated and changed how their rating their audience rating works but this was kind of interesting um, so they're writing high off, so Sony is writing high off this, and they're writing off of Spider-Verse. Here's the thing, though, and a few people have pointed out, oh, they did Spider-Verse, and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing, oh, speaking of which, wearing Spider-Verse t-shirt. Um, here's the thing, though, Sony Animation has an entirely different staff. 
They have different writers. They have uh, different filmmakers. They've got uh, different everything. Um, so Sony gave um, Sony Animation way more freedom to make Spider-Verse. A lot more freedom. And uh, gave them more creative freedom. It took them five years to make the film, I think. Uh, something like that. They went through sto 100 storyboards. They, uh, they learned new animation techniques for the CGI and all kinds of stuff. So um, for Sony to gamble on this is very, very stupid. Because Sony Pictures has a, like all live action companies, they have a stranglehold on their people because, you know, there's really no freedom for a director except in indie films. And usually those films, while the critics love them, they're actually kind of boring and, uh, you know, or they don't make sense and, and whatnot. So, um, so Sony has like this big stranglehold. I mean, think about it. Venom was supposed to be rated R, but the Sony, but, but the, but the Sony put a stranglehold on the director and forced him to bring it down to PG-13. Nothing wrong with that. I am not of the opinion that a rating determines a quality of a film. I get an argument with uh, with a fellow conservative named Harry Kakatrian on uh, on Twitter all the time. He and I go back and forth about this. The rating does not testify to the quality of the film. There are good bad there are good rated R films, there are bad rated R films, there's good PG thirteen, there's bad PG thirteen, and the list goes on. Some uh, some stories do require um, do require a certain uh, rating. For instance, Saving Private Ryan, fantastic film, um, fantastic rated R film. Dunkirk, another war movie. Uh, PG-13, fantastic war, World War II film, just like saying Private Ryan. I don't, uh, I won't say which one is better. That's quiet to me. But I will say that both of those films are fantastic, and the ratings do not speak to their quality. Now, getting back to the Sony Dis Disney thing, first of all, it was just kind of scummy of Sony to do this. I mean, um, fans reacted very poorly. Sony put out this pathetic statement on Twitter which I reacted to and just basically talked about how, how it's bull malarkey. And a lot of people love my use of the word bull malarkey. I'm from Texas, and that's a phrase there, I guess. So um, I basically just called them out and said they're bull malarkey, and their statement is bull malarkey. That was actually one of the tweets that got added to the Twitter moment was me calling Sony bull malarkey. So, well, so all, all the Disney derangement people came out and defended Sony. Oh! Oh! Get my mind, my fates and couch, and even people on the conservative side of the aisle. Let me tell you. So I've already told you that Sony is overestimating their success based on an animated film and a um, and a Venom film. So the reaction to this ha has been where everyone's trying to say Sony is this honorable and noble movie company, and they're beating their chest because Disney has bad business practices and. They make bad remakes. And blah, 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 blah. No. So, yes, Disney does sometimes make bad remakes, and um, and they're obviously not interested in doing anything creative anymore. But um, in this case, Sony was wrong, and it was really crappy of them. They did this is just out of greed. It's out of stubbornness. They are jealous of the MCU success and angry that no one wanted to see their Spidey spinoff films, with the exception of Venom. No one wanted to see Silver and Black based on Silver Sable and Black Cat because those properties are stupid and no one wants to see a full movie with Silver Sable and Black Cat. Now, Silver Sable, you might be able to pull it off if you make it like a kind of like a spy thing because she's a mercenary. So if you do kind of like The Expendables or Red or something like that. You might be able to pull that off. But, come on. Black Cat can't carry her own movie. Certainly not without a Spider-Man themed villain. And same with Silver Sable. Uh, her and her wild pack and all that. It's not gonna... It, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, what next? Puma? You're gonna make a spinoff of Puma? Um, they were even talking about at one point after The Amazing Spider-Man 2, they were gonna do a Sinister Six film that didn't have Spider-Man. That's insane and it's stupid. If you really want to do make your own little spider verse that's separate from the MCU, they should just use the Miles Morales character. Just do Miles Morales Spider Man and make it like he's in another dimension. And then with uh, home, and then they could even do the. the there was this uh, crossover between. 
the Ultimate Universe and the Mainstream Universe before they kind of merged after the Second uh, Secret War, where they could even do something like that. I mean, come on. Sony, this is really stupid of you. You've angered all the fan base, and, and I love how like they even got the Hollywood Reporter to write a story criticizing us toxic fans who, um, who don't like it. Come on. We don't need some elite uh, writer at the Hollywood Reporter to tell me about my feelings that I'm just being toxic um, because of that. No, that's stupid, and it's none of your business. You've probably never even seen a comic book mo movie, Hollywood Reporter, or if you have, it's only because you had you had some intern write uh, watch it and then write it up so you wouldn't have to. I mean, come on, no one no one buys that. Hollywood Reporters, maybe maybe they saw uh, Infinity War and Endgame, but come on, come on, I don't need some bougie reporter to tell me about my fandom back off. Anyway, um, er no one can, can believe this. And, and uh, now, there was one kind of uh, uh, hole in my theory is that Kevin Smith agrees with me. Kevin Smith, of course, writer of Clerks, and he's doing a, a new movie, another Jane Silent Bob film. Uh, Kevin Smith is a fake nerd. He presents himself as like sort of this comic book expert. He's not. He's written terrible Batman comics. He wrote an okay Green Arrow comic, and I guess he wrote an okay story in Batman, or I should say Detective Comics 1000. He's a fake nerd. He never knows what he's talking about. His only good show was his Hulu one that only lasted one season because he's just a jerk. And uh, he's also a terrible filmmaker on top of everything else. But for some reason, the comic book industry grovels at his feet for no reason. And he came out in support of Disney, which was weird. Now, some people have pointed out to me that Stanley's daughter, who was accused of elder abuse, got off because Stanley kind of defended her, um, even though she was clearly letting her psycho boyfriend get away with stuff. Anyway, uh, they, um, she came out and said that Sony needs to be given a chance. Now listen, if I'm wrong, I have this deal with Sarah Haggard, who's a, another movie reviewer. If if the if a Sony if Sony proceeds and makes a, a third Spider-Man film uh, without Tom Holland and John, everyone's like, oh, Tom Holland's and, and the director John Watts, they're still signed on. There's uh, they're already saying John Watts is going to leave the project. Holland is next. And they're going to do one movie like this where it's going to be kind of connect. They have to connect it to Far From Home because it ended in such a cliffhanger. Spoiler alert. But um, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work out the way people think it is. But if I'm wrong, I'm not. But if I'm wrong, I told Sarah Haggard, who she's very pro of this movie, I told her she could write a guest movie review on my blog. And uh, and she can even title it, I Told You So. Um that being said, um, I don't think it's going to turn out the way people think. Sony has Sony Pictures rules their properties like with an iron fist, similar to Disney. But Disney at least gets directors and actors who care about the roles. This is a mistake Warner Brothers has made. They, with the exception of Gal Gadot and Jason Momoa, and I guess you could throw in Henry Cavill. The um, the rest of the cast just didn't care about the roles, and uh, it they were very miscast. I mean, uh, come on, they're Lex Luthor, no. Anyway, um, Sony just isn't capable of doing this with Spider Man. They they have um, Spider Verse and Spider Man Two. Those are the only two like really great films. Now, the first Spider Man when it came out with the one with Tobey Maguire, it is good. But it's still a product of its time. It's not really um, one you can talk about down the road. I mean, you can watch it and enjoy it, but Spider-Man Two, it's going to be a, it's going to be a timeless one. And uh, Spider-Man Three, everyone wants to forget. And so I think it's just a mistake. And then Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man Two, again, good films, but they're just don't have the gravitas that Homecoming and Far From Home have. They're way better. They have better Peter Parker. If they may, if they get John Watts back and if they get Tom Holland back, this is what's going to happen. The first one is going to do really well at the box office, but then we're going to hear that there was a contract dispute. Tom Holland is going to be gone, the John Watts is going to be gone, and then they're going to bring in new actors and a new director, and it's going to be bad.
That's my prediction. And I actually think the one that the first one they do that separate from the MCU, it's going to be one of those where you just go, it was kind of going to be like the Amazing Spider Man. Oh, that's new, but it's not going to be near the level that Spider Man 2 was, or Far From Home, or Homecoming. I am, uh, it's going to, or Spider Verse even. Um, the only thing good is if they do Spider Man versus Venom right out of the gate. That's, that's got to be their, that's their route to success right there. That if they don't do that, um, which they can't because they, they painted themselves into a corner with how the Far From Home ended, um, they're going to, uh, that's that's really going to cost them. And I really hope they come to their senses because there's rumors that because of the public pressure, they're actually, they actually are going to try to renegotiate with Disney. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's all the time I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, once again, be sure to like it. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Ring that little bell. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Real Jacob Airy. My Instagram is the same at Real Jacob Airy. My Facebook is Author Jacob Airy. Head over to my blog where I talk more about Marvel and comic books and anime and TV shows and movies. Head over there. It's jacobairy.blog. That's J A C O B A I R E Y dot B L O G. Also, on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, BookLocker.com, and for some reason, Apple, <laughs> you, can down, um, you can download my novel, The Seven Royals, All Good Things, um, as an ebook. Um, it's um, a fantasy story with some of your favorite fairy tale characters. I'm going to read you the back of the book right now. And the land of Cray, seven young royals, Jasher, Philip, Talia, Connor, Rapunzel, James, and Belle, were living peaceful lives until Emperor Midas and the evil Grand Mage Fabius Thorne attack their lands with their dark army. The dragon prince Jasher is put into a frozen sleep while the others are scattered for their protection. Ten years later, Jasher awakens with a mystical blue sword and unites the other six. Along the way, the royals encounter friends, foes, and unexpected allies as they journey back to retake their homeland. So you can, like I said, you can download it um, uh, for your ebook or your e-reader, whatever it's called all over those websites, and you can get a, a, heart, a, a paperback copy at Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.